as promised before, I'm gone, I'm sorry. Hi guys, that's one. I'll say hello. Hi guys. As promised before, I'm going to show you how to determine which of each nucleon within an atom is a neutron and which of those nucleons is a proton. Well, starting off with the first electron shield, you have this helium atom and they were all gridlocked. The only reason this one, this electron pops out and that electron pops out is because it spins as a whole by the gravitons hitting it, making them pop out. They are the furthest, the farthest from the center and those two won't pop out either because they have the wrong angle. They would need to pop out that direction, that direction which is not very um, Oh, it's not enough speed and not enough angular speed for those for the blue and the white one to pop out, but enough angular speed for the red and the yellow one to pop out. If you can see, they have a different position. They have a, they're not the same. So helium. Uh, now we're going to look at oxygen, and oxygen is a atom which isn't gridlocked. In oxygen, all the individual nucleons can spin. Um, this one is a bit over, this, this molecule, no I'm sorry, this atom, this atom is a bit overstretched. In reality uh, those long blue uh, members are shorter but then you wouldn't have any oversight. Now you can see what I mean. Um, this is a nice example of a spinning nucleon see one of the quarks makes up for the structure, for the crystal structure, the other two spin around it. And this is a typical proton where one of the gravitons sticks out, has a bigger circumference, therefore a higher absolute speed. And when it has a higher speed it means we can see it as an electron because it has a potential difference with the other normally at normal speed. So this makes it a proton. But a proton can turn into a neutron. That simple. And being a proton or neutron depends on the room they have to lash out, the room they have to stretch. And when you have a, an atom like this, there's not always room for every single one of them to become a proton. So it depends on the room they have, and it also depends on the direction of rotation of the adjacent uh, nucleons. And um, that's because they, in, they interact like cocks. And with cocks it's the same thing. If cocks uh, hit each other, they better go the same direction. If, if one goes the other direction, they cannot be that big. They have to be a little, little, little bit smaller, thus being a neutron. I'm gonna, that's a bit complicated, but this will clarify it. Allow me to take this piece of board this piece of board and a oxygen atom. The oxygen atom has uh, two pyramids, a bottom to bottom, and in the middle there are four uh, n uh, neutrons, and I flag down with the, the with the, the blue tape just to to uh, to to make to make them uh, show as look. Uh, neutrons. So because they have blue tape they are neutrons and the other ones don't have blue tape making them protons. They are not flagged down, they can have a big circumference. Um, so why are those eight protons? Why not the other ones in the middle? Well, I have here these gears and I have two kinds of gears. I have big gears and small gears and this is a big gear and a small gear. The small gear represents the neutron with this small with this gun, this thing, you know, the, 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 the neutron has a small orbit. Not, no one sticks out. And the big gears are the protons having one of those. 
uh, gravitons stick out, making a seed as an electron. So the big gear represents the bigger circumference of the proton, and the adjacent protons should spin the same direction to make the, them uh, get along. So that was pretty tedious. Now the the reality of the thing I have here, I'm making it right now. Just adding gears to these doubles to these pins to this square formation. I have uh, over here. You can see a square formation, triangular formation, and over here a diamond-shaped formation. And those diamond shape, the diamond shape, we will recognize that this is a diamond shape formation. And this is the pyramid as shown in oxygen, which is the, 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 the square formation, square formation. And we also have a triangular formation, right? We have those two. But oxygen has two of those pyramids, which are square formations, and I'm going to add four of those protons to that. Just to make sure that you can see that. Not a bit. But it fits. You can see now how it's easy for all four protons to get along. All four protons can spin because this one goes clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise and so forth. They can all get along in oxygen. So this is representing the four protons in both pyramids of the oxygen atom. So that makes eight electrons, eight valence and you have of course the one, the blue one on tip, and at the bottom the blue tip. Those are uh, the stationary uh, nucleons holding the others together. I've told about duckings, and that well, each nucleon can dock four others on each side. And when it does so, it has this blue one represents a nucleon having four of those yellow ribs attached to it, uh, making the blue nucleon itself stationary, but the other ones have freedom to spin. So, <clears throat> you have two spinners, two of those, those gear systems, and you might think, well, if oxygen has eight protons flashing out, why can it only uh, bond with only two hydrogen uh, atoms? Well, the answer is quite simple again. When you look at this, this is oxygen, and oxygen is spinning. And when that happens, chances are this one gets caught. This is hydrogen coming in, getting caught, and then smashes against the other one, which keeps them in a vice light like. Oh, well, in a lock, like a vice, you know, it's, it's other side around, and uh, that's fine. Hydrogen, oxygen, the four, oxygen, the protons of the oxygen, four of them, and one hydrogen, but they're all locked in place, and that's nasty. This means when they're locked in place, the protons will decay into neutrons. And the only thing which Ash can do to, to absorb some energy from the ether, from the colliding gravitons, is to turn those two into nucleons. And when they are nucleons, there's no bigger circumference, no, that not that big circumference for, for that, that, that electron sticking out. It doesn't stick out anymore. It has normal speed and loses its ability to bind to another hydrogen atom. So that's about balance. It's, it's a very uh, delicate balance. 
these two catch hydrogen, then these two are forced to become neutrons instead of protons, lacking any valence. And these two are gridlocked. Though, so though they, though don't, they don't have any valence either, they don't have any speed either. So each half of oxygen, this four combinations represent the, those four legs, which means each half of oxygen can only catch one hydrogen atom. Oxygen, two separated gear systems, means it can catch two hydrogen atoms. So in effect, although you're having eight electrons in orbit, it can only catch two hydrogen. So, and that's demonstrated again with the same mechanism I used to determine which one is a proton and which one is a neutron and oxygen. Um, and now we're going to get along. We're going to the um, next contender, the next completed shield, which is argon. I have to look over my shoulder because over there it is. Argon. Now, when you look at argon, you can see oxygen in the middle. You see the yellow Q-tips, which are oxygen in the middle. Argon is oxygen with eight tripods, eight three-legged pyramids with eight tripods added. That's argon. Um, now a tripod in itself can't have three protons. And there's a simple reason for that. Um, when I take this little board with these dowels and pins on it, two of them can spin, no problem. Now let's see how I can see. They can spin, no problem. But if a third has with a triangle, there's a triangle underneath, you know, I, uh, this is black marker to, 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 to make a triangle. Two protons can get along, no problem, but if a third joins, as in the tripod, you see there's a conflict over there, it's a conflict. They cannot all spin because these teeth here are rattling. And if I force them onto each other, you see they are gridlocked. And the only way to stop that gridlock, the only way to spin, to, to, to absorb as many energy of the ether, diffusion, as many energy of the ether, how can you do that? You have to sacrifice, one of them has to sacrifice itself becoming a neutron. And now the neutron can spin, but also the other two protons can spin. So you get now all three nucleons can now spin because one of them said, okay, I will sacrifice myself, I will become a neutron. And the other ones can happily be protons spinning around. It doesn't ma ma uh, make any difference which one sacrifices itself, as long as one of them becomes a neutron. Smaller circumference. So that is how, why uh, a triangle, a tripod, can only have uh, can have two protons max. So that triangle, there it is again, and then you can recognize it looking at my lovely argon atom, and you can see of every blue triangle one of the members is flagged down in order to allow the other ones to be protons, to remain protons. So that's argon and you might wonder why is this one always because on the top the ones are flagged down and not in the middle. They're in the middle, they're not flagged down at the top and at the bottom they're flagged down, not in the middle. Why is that? Well, if you look uh, carefully you can see um, two triangles actually. You can see if this is the tip, these three blue one members, these two blue nucleons form a triangle. But 
those two yellow ones of the oxygen within form a triangle as well with this one. And how can you be as efficient as possible in making as many pro uh, nucleons being protons that's flag as little uh, nucleons as possible, or make as little neutrons as possible. So, looking at those two triangles, this is, the, this is an outtake of this bigger atom. You can recognize this thing. So, it's a triangle from this side, but also from that side. And if you want to shut them both down, the most efficient way is to flag this one down so the other four can remain spinning. And they are in a four configuration, and as shown before, four can uh, happily be protons in this kind of configuration. Because there is no, not much difference between this four legged pyramid and this object, it's all the same. Uh, the same configuration of four of those things make it possible to all four be protons. I apologize if I'm a bit slow, but that's because there are some scientific institutes who disagree with me or don't understand what I'm talking about, and uh, so I'm a bit slow just to help them out, and but I'm sure you can see what I mean with four of those protons being able to spin at the same time. But the tripod of course couldn't, and therefore argon, when after the tripod's added, you can see the valence of the two, you can see they are two, again, two different systems, two different gear systems, and you can see there are those on top, other ones flagged down, be most efficient. Being flagged down, they do not protect this one sticking out very well. So there's a little balance here. A little possibility, a small possibility of this making a connection. We can see this as an electron as well, and this one too, because of that, because of there are no adjacent protons, only adjacent uh, neutrons, which don't, which don't shield off this very well. So argon has one on top, one on the bottom, makes two. And look at the other ones, that's in total eight three parts. Every three part has, has only two protons, so there's two electrons per three part. Eight times two makes 16 electrons, plus the one on top and the one on the bottom, makes 18 electrons in orbit for argon. Wonderful, isn't that? That's science. This is new to everybody in the scientific world. Not Einstein, not Bohr, not CERN, not NASA. They are totally clueless about this simple mechanism. But we ain't. We're smarter than them now, are we? Hello, please. 18. 18 of those things. And why does argon have problems, has problems reacting with other uh, materials? Well, this one, the valence of it, depends on the spin of the entire structure, spin of the atom core. So, it always goes slower than, than, than those individual spinning nucleons, so has little valence. And the other ones, well yeah, they spin fast too, they, they do spin fast, those four over here. But as you can see they are facing each other almost, which means they are shielding almost. They are have they're protecting each other, they're facing each other. It's very hard for an external uh, atom, an external particle, to, to, to bind with, with, to make create a bond with these elect spinning electrons because they're facing each other a bit. Mm -hmm. Whereas oxygen, oxygen, all eight of them are, little hair, all eight of them are faced outwards. Come on, they are trying to grab as many particles, as many adjacent particles, say hydrogen atoms, as possible. Because they're, they're outwards, they're spinning outwards. You can see the difference very well if you, if I can, like 
this. You see the difference in shape, right? See what I mean? You see that oxygen spins its electrons outwards and argon spins the electrons inwards. Very hard to reach them and very easy, easy to reach those. So that's uh, determining the number of uh, protons on oxygen and argon step by step as slowly as possible. Um, we're going to now to the next step because we haven't uh, discussed the diamond shape. A diamond shape is something special but not complicated. It works using the same rule set. When we take argon, there you are, argon. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, argon. When you take argon, this one, this is argon. And add four parts, as many as possible. Uh, so many four parts that it really shields off the shield before. You're gonna get germanium. Germanium is argon having uh, 12 four parts added. But when you look at those four parts, they aren't the pyramids of oxygen. These four parts are actually more of a, they're stretched out on one side and pushed together on the other side. These four parts are uh, diamond shaped like things. Diamond shaped like structures. Like these, so this is a diamond shaped structure. See, and a diamond shape is almost one triangle, two triangles. It's, it's all two triangles fused. It's a diamond shape. So, a diamond shape um, responds differently than an, uh, an ordinary uh, pyramid. Just to show the difference between those two get a diamond shape and a pyramid. So, now does a diamond shape respond and how does it? Well, that's water. Cheers. A diamond shape. Well, over here, oh my. This would have these four dowels in a diamond shape, diamond shape configuration. And again, we're gonna stick on those four bigger gears, those four protons, because nature wants all neutrons to decay into protons. So, there you go. Oops. Unlike with the four. Uh, unlike with the pyramid, unlike with the square, the diamond shape can't spin them when they are all protons. One of them has to be sacrificed in order to make as many spin as possible. So if I take out one of those protons, make it decay into a neutron, then they can all can spin happily along. And it doesn't matter which one of these two is the nucleon, uh, the neutron, and which one is the proton, of course, it doesn't matter. Uh, as long as one of the middle ones decays back into a neutron. So, this is one configuration of the diamond shape. And we will see that configuration looking at the top and bottom. You see, this is one. Um, can I see it make it more clear for you? Um, this is the tip of the oxygen, of the argon, and of the germanium. This is the top side of the atom, and the other tip is the bottom side of the atom. And you can see there are four one, this is one, two. The, the, focus on the red ones, the, the red here tips. You, and you can see four of those diamond shaped four parts and you can see that as one of them flagged down one of them has sacrificed itself 
becoming a neutron in order yeah, so the other one can remain protons exactly as shown here one sacrificing itself um, there's not a possibility as well but um, it isn't preferred but <laughs> it's a not a possibility as well because it, and it isn't preferred because it has two uh, neutron two neutrons instead of one if we take this diamond shape and say well I'm gonna take this one out here again a proton counter well if I just take this one off six percent that's fine but still this can't spin so if you have those to the on the elongated side this is the narrow side the narrow side only one of them has to be a neutron as seen before but on the elongated side both of them have to become neutrons in order to allow the other ones to remain protons so that's uh, another uh, option and that option we will see again with germanium but now in the middle I've shown you the, 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 the blue tip one side and the other side which is top and bottom but now we're going to look at the middle and we can see those four four parts again you see this is an awesome angle to look at it you can see this one is flagged down uh, this one is flagged down and those other two are allowed to become to remain protons as we saw on this plate flag down protons and on the opposite side flagged down so this configuration can be seen over here and it has four of those and now we're going to look at uh, uh, and again uh, with the medium you have to look at the shield before you can see again here adjacent to these red q-tips adjacent to the red q-tips are blue q-tips and uh, these form a shape uh, uh, these form a triangle shape one red blue blue a triangle one of them has to be shut off same thing here so these two are shut off allowing these two to spin so we have to uh, not only think about the new electron shell but also the electron shell uh, the, the prior one when you figure out which one is a proton which one is a neutron but now we're going to count those uh, electrons again I'm going to uh, look at this one we've seen these have three protons times four makes twelve opposite side same thing three protons times four makes twelve and then in the middle we had those two with only two protons four of them makes eight which gives me twelve and twelve and eight That's how much twenty four and eight thirty two germanium has thirty two uh, electrons in orbit well exactly and I know exactly which one and so do you it's very easy very simple to determine nothing and I maybe you might wonder why are the blue chips included because with with argon I included some the blue tips, the blue tips, uh, can I show the blue tip? There you go, that's blue tip. Okay. Blue tip. I included that one because it was adjacent to the neutrons. Yeah, flag down, it cannot shield it very much, so it has its own valence. Looking at germanium, adjacent to this blue tip are 1, 2, 3, 12 protons adjacent to each of those blue tips 12 right? which makes it shielded so it's shielded off so they're not included so the number of atoms spinning remains at 32 now this is easy for us for you and me but it's very complicated for guys like Einstein or Bohr they didn't get it at all this is very complicated for some this is extremely complicated for Nature magazine yeah 
No, I, I shouldn't start a rant here, but I've shown this to Nature magazine, this this model, and every detail as as step by step, as slow as possible. And still they, they gave me the, the, their, their standard letter, well it doesn't contribute much to science, I'm sure some people might find it interesting, but it doesn't add much. Doesn't add much. It doesn't add much. This atom model is the only atom model complying with the number of electrons spinning around, having the right atomic wave, having the right crystal shape for each and every, even the material properties of each element comply with the things we've learned over the centuries. This is the only atom model that, and only 3D atom model that does that. It doesn't add anything. It's based on the holy grail of science. These simple nucleons are based on the mechanism of gravity. And it all complies with everything we know, the expansion of the universe, you name it, everything complies with these nucleons. But no, it doesn't add much, does it? I know the shape of those things. They are balls here, but they are actually ball-shaped springs. I know the size, the weight, how, the tension of it. I know every little detail about this fucking universe. But no, it doesn't add much. Not to major magazine. Now how stupid can you be? Nature magazine declines me because it thinks it doesn't. It, it, it thinks well, this doesn't add anything. It's the holy grail science, and it doesn't add anything. How stupid can you be? Well, they have a problem, Nature magazine, which uh, you no. Know, I thought that there was something special, Nature magazine, but they have editors, and those editors uh, are making it very hard on themselves. They're trying to figure out. They're trying to figure out um, the contents of every paper they are sent. So when I send them a paper, they're trying to figure out all the details. Well, Einstein couldn't figure them out. Neither could Bohr, and neither can Cern, and neither can Fermilab, and neither can NASA. They couldn't figure this simple thing out, and I did. Now don't expect, if you are an editor, and even if you are a, a, a professor at a university, don't expect to understand stuff that complicated, but they think they can understand, and they think they can discriminate between uh, important papers and less important papers. The only thing where they see is that I am not a professor, that I'm not, uh, that I don't have any liaisons with, with a university or with, with a big institute, I'm a single loner beating every scientific institute in the world and they decline me they, they refuse to publicize or review my articles because I mean because I don't have I'm, I'm not an engineer I'm not a professor I don't have any titles and that's their weaknesses that's the weakness of name but now is now they start to figure out the things they cannot figure out they tried it but they cannot figure out Suppose Nature magazine was around in, 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 in the 1900s, in the early 1900s. And Einstein comes, Einstein has space time, he shows the Nature magazine. And says, what? Time is dimension? What is this kind of bullshit? Get out of here, Einstein. This is bullshit. I'm not going to publish that. I'm not going to do that. Because I'm too stupid to understand it. That's Nature magazine. Instead of trying to figure out what we know, as, as, as normal thinking, logical thinking human beings, we know this how this works. I've shown it. It's very simple. We understand it. But they don't, and they shouldn't try. The only thing they have to do is, well, if you're from a big institute, you know what, I'm going to grant you half a page in my magazine. And if you're a loner like me, like this guy, I'm going to grant you maybe a picture, maybe a single link, maybe a few lines, but that's it. Just grab me a few lines. And that would make Nature magazine, uh, how do you call it, not corrupted, uh, impartial. Now they, they are uh, corrupted or, or very sensitive to corruption because they can decide which one article they publish with not. But they should only look at how much space do I going to reserve for that article? How much space do you get, get the, 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 the single loaner? How much space does CERN get? How much space does uh, a university get? That's it. That will make it far easier on ourselves and far more interesting to their readers. Because now their readers are uh, deprived 
from all these new wonderful things. I'm not the only one who has a brain here. Come on, watch YouTube. There are lots of people who have a brain and, and showed it. And, but they will never get a single chance because corrupted magazines like Nature say, well, no, you're uh, some kind of loner, uh, you're full of shit, get out of here. That's what they say. That's stupid. They are keeping you dumb. They are keeping people dumb. And this means you will never get free energy or levitation or even eternal life. Stuff I've been working on for decades. You're all going to miss that because Nature magazine isn't the, 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 the unbiased magazine it, it presents to be. Nature magazine is no more than any other tabloid in the world. It's, it's no more than any other know-how or, or, or scientific paper. Because, you know, if, if you look at any scientific paper, you have editors and they are trying to look on the inside. They're trying to, to explore what's... What, what's what, what, the papers, they get sent and they, um, how do we call it? They value them. And since Nature Magazine does exactly the same thing, they're not any different from all the other scientific papers. And that's their loss, that's their demise, that's their downfall. But I can't help them. It's their choice to ignore people like you and me. It's their choice to ignore real scientists. Well, that's it, my friends. Um, I really want to start uh, thinking, figuring out more about eternal life, uh, how to change the counters, how to uh, reverse aging and heal stuff. But I need people to, to believe in me because if I disclose my information about uh, the human life, about how to heal diseases, I can disclose, but nobody's going to listen. And this star drive thing, this this atom model, this uh, is a promotional thing for me. If people start reading it, start seeing, hey, wait, he's right, it works like that, then I can become big, and then IBM and Philips will listen to me. Because IBM and Philips are very much into uh, uh, healing people. They have these big scanners and stuff, and you need, if you want to heal someone, you need to scan the entire body and their brain, of course, scan it in, change the counting, change the settings. Reprogram them and that's and then get out of the, the scanner. That's actually the big lines of the ideas I have for 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 fixing people uh, people's defects. But again, I can't do that if if Star Drive gets denied, if I get denied, if if this simple mechanism, this is the most simple thing of all seven uh, disciplines, the most simple one. And CERN, Fermilab, NASA, they're really very sad institutions because they cannot see this simple thing, you cannot understand it. And they don't, the, the thing is, they don't get a chance to do so because everyone denies me. That's fucked up. I need faith, people. I can heal you, I can save your lives, I, I can do anything you want, but I need faith. Without faith, I'm, I'm nothing. But hey, I know, it sounds a little bit better, I'm not gonna give up. I never, ever quit. Nothing is impossible, and never, ever quit. Subscribe if you can, because it would help me out. You know, if, if I become popular on YouTube, uh, more people are going to see my videos and more people are going to question Star Drive and realize it's the holy grail of science. So I need your subscriptions. I really need them to make this world a better place. It's only one mouse click away. You want to save yourself. want to save this world. want to save the people you love. Come on, give me a chance. Have faith in me. Have faith in me. This world is amazing as it is and it only needs a few adjustments that's all i can stop war i can stop diseases i can do anything if only people believe in me it's literally that thing. no faith in me no believe in me means i do not get the proper attention i need for doing what i need to do simple as that you might believe in god you might not believe in god there is something out there some life forms are out there smarter than we are that's a fact and for some reason maybe they inspire me because what I did as a single man is almost impossible it's against all odds it's really weird the one man can figure out this entire universe beating every institute on the planet how is that possible so there's a very big chance I have some connection up there so that means if I can figure out the universe I can figure out how your DNA works. I can figure out how your soul works. I can retrieve souls from beyond. I can uh, maybe even change time. 
put the twin towers back up, whatever you want. Uh, retrieve the lost, your lost ones, your loved ones. I'm gonna do that shit. I'm, I'm, I'm destined to do that shit. I've seen what I can do now. You've seen what I can do. Have faith. Subscribe. I love you. Have a nice day.